Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that'll probably leave you with more questions than answers, man. But before we hop into that, I got a little announcement to make. After many months of research and development, I'm happy to announce that the merch shop is officially live. For the initial drop, we have this hat as well as a t-shirt. The quality is great. The shipping times are pretty fast. So head over to shopmytricker.com to get your hands on the merch before it's all gone. But with that being said, guys, let's hop straight into the video. You can say goodbye to your school holidays, guys. Say goodbye. If you are still in school, I feel so bad for you right now. I honestly feel so bad. Just leave. Just, just, well, actually, no, you can't. So I'm sure you all know who this lovely guy right here is. Now, if you don't know, a few weeks ago, he made some propositions about what he wanted to do with the school system, basically saying that they're going to scrap A-levels. Everybody has to stay in school until you're 18, when you could previously leave at 16. And you also have to do maths and English until you're 18, whereas before you could have done, you know, whatever subject you wanted. So, great. But now another plan has come into place, and this has actually come into place today, and it's not good. So there's now a marketing campaign which went out today basically saying, do not take your kids out of school in term time. He said the kids need to be in school for so much longer than they already are. And as he said before, kids aren't spending enough time in the classroom. I think they are. I mean, I think kids are spending a lot of time in the classroom. Now, of course, a lot of people take their kids away on holiday in term time because it's a lot cheaper. But now he wants to put in even bigger fines and punishments for if you do do this, to the point that parents will now even get a warning text if they take their child out for a day and it says, warning, bring them back now. Like, what? What's going on? Not being funny, I think this guy will probably completely ban school holidays soon. He's already said he wants to reduce them when... People in normal school literally get like five weeks. Five weeks at summer, that's it. So he wants to reduce that. You might as well just stay in school full time. It's just not, it's just mad. If this is his big plan to improve the education system, then he should go back to the drawing board because it sounds counterintuitive. As a student, holiday breaks is all we really have to look forward to. This would deplete my motivation altogether. But Austin-based Black Dot has changed the name of the game, offering a dramatically different approach to tattoos through this device, creating a credit card-sized design rendered through several tiny dots as opposed to an artist sketching in hand with a tattoo gun. We actually spoke with one woman who had a tattoo etched onto her arm through this device. She says it was a lot less painful than a typical tattoo insertion. And Black Dot says the machine the machine is very precise. I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to have getting a tattoo this accessible, especially for younger people who might end up regretting their choices later on. But they really coming for every industry now. Guys, the weather is out of whack again. We're only into the 22nd day of the year and this is what's happening right now check this out what the now i thought the snowstorms were it i thought that was it but no there was a whole ice storm going on right now and i don't know how many people are aware about it but it's bad and to show you how bad it got this is an example a fire truck is skidding downhill doing a whole 360. This is Knoxville, Tennessee right here, okay? It hits St. Louis and Kansas City as well. Now you might have thought, oh, it can't get any worse. San Diego is literally in the middle of a flood right now. Pray for San Diego, guys, because it's getting really bad out there. And I'm talking really bad, look at this. And this is how it looks from a bird's eye view. That is at least four feet of water right there. Check out the back of this apartment. Crazy guys, crazy. And apparently there's supposed to be another ice storm on the 29th hitting, heading towards Texas or something like that. So I guess this ain't the end of it. You know what I'm saying? We're bound to see more crazy stuff from mother nature pretty soon. I don't know if this is just naturally an extremely cold winter or this is a harp induced ice storm, but those firefighters did not expect the Tokyo drift down the street like that. Yo, I'm not about to sign for this dog, bro. This is not buttercup. This is false advertising. Y'all better send this back. They might want to upgrade that plastic kennel to a metal one because it looks like he already chewed through half of it. And if he gets loose on this plane, it's going to be a long flight for everybody. There is a 100% probability that our sun generating what they call a GMD, uh, which is a solar storm, it hits our Earth and uh, you the magnetic field that we have around the Earth and can fry everything that is electric above the ground, including our entire grid. It would take out not only the electricity, but, you know, all of our, our entire infrastructure and our society runs our electricity. We don't we don't know how to live without it. There wouldn't be any water in your tap. You couldn't get gas for your car because the, the, the whole system is broken down. Everything that we rely upon would be gone. And food would uh, melt in our refrigerators. And they predict within a year, about 90 percent of the population would be 
from starvation or you know people it gets back to the stone age again we need to check the math on that 100 percent probability because i don't necessarily think that dennis quaid is the most qualified expert on the topic but if we know that this is a threat i would expect with all the funding going around that our systems would be engineered to withstand such an event let's come out for breakfast look at the state of that look at that more that way I don't know how often you guys see chemtrails in the UK, but this looks like every major U.S. city on a typical Tuesday afternoon. Alistair Crowley, a very famous occultist who practiced ritual magic, he conducted a ritual that's called the Amalantra working, and he made contact with an alien named Lamb. This alien entity that he drew out was the first gray alien that was ever depicted. This magic ritual, it goes all the way back to the Book of Enoch. There were these fallen angels, they called the Watchers, and the Watchers came and they taught man how to use magic. And these entities taught them the Enochian language. Foley said, okay, well, let's talk to these entities using that Enochian language. And he did that many times. For decades and decades, the government had this internal Pentagon group that said, hey, all this alien activity could be demonic in some way. Pump the brakes on trying to summon these things because there could be some unintended consequences. If this is true, then this sort of supports David Grush's claims during a UFO disclosure meeting that the beings that they were encountering were more interdimensional than extraterrestrial. Well, how do you feel about NASA having its own like photoshopping branch? Do they? There are people at NASA that photoshop. You know, the, you look at a picture of Mars, what color do you think it is? It's like a dusty it's like fan. orange, right? Did you pull up the real pictures of Mars, what they actually look like without the filter on them? What Am I crazy? Well, isn't it like Earth crazy different spots that have like different color ground? I don't know. So you look at pictures of Mars from like 20 to 30 years ago or whatever, and then you look at pictures of Mars now, they're drastically different because people caught on to like, why are you throwing a filter on Mars? It so doesn't, were look, it doesn't look Mars? like that. Interesting. In my opinion, the only reason why you would ever use a filter on an authentic picture of Mars is if it was actually a picture of, let's say, Devon Island, but you wanted to pass it off as Mars. What do you think Think, what 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 is what are human beings going to be best at in a world of AI? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, um, when do you think we're going to have our first uh, WEF uh, panel moderated by an AI? <laughs> you know, I've been uh, sitting on this stage for a lot of years. I'm always looking down at someone. Got a great moderator right here with Yusuf. And uh, but maybe it's not that far along. You know, maybe pretty soon, a couple years, we're going to have a WEF digital moderator sitting in that chair moderating this panel and maybe doing a pretty good job because it's going to have access to a lot of the information that we have. Now, I think that it's going to evoke the question of, well, do, are we going to trust it? I, I think that trust kind of comes up right up the hierarchy pretty darn quick. You know, we're going to have digital doctors, digital people, and these digital people are going to emerge and there's going to have to be a level of trust. Digital doctors is where I have to draw the line because what happens if you get in a surgery by Dr. R2-D2 and the power suddenly goes out? I guess there wasn't enough in the budget for stainless steel boats, bro. I just tell my boss to throw the whole tower away. Is it true that this popular Sephora fragrance attracts spiders? The Sephora shoppers claim that Delicia Drench by Sol de Janeiro contains a mix of pheromones designed to attract male wolf spiders, following a recent Reddit thread with a viral one-star review. The review labeled this product as, quote, kryptonite to wolf spiders after noticing an increase in spider sightings while wearing the scent every day. Others shared similar spider sightings after using the fragrance. Another user claimed this fragrance led to the discovery of 
spider bites. And one described an instance where this, quote, heavenly scent caused spiders to, quote, chase her while following the fragrance. The review garnered over 4,600 upvotes on the Sephora subreddit. Some people turned into investigators, with one TikToker testing out the different body butter fragrances to see whether they attracted spiders, while many vowed to avoid the scent altogether. Another post mentioned a 2009 study from the National Library of Medicine. The study looked at two compounds found in certain cosmetics, also present in female spider webs. It concluded that these compounds need to be combined in specific amount to attract male spiders. Sol de Janeiro responded to the allegations on Saturday, saying the rumors had, quote, no merit whatsoever, and confirmed that the chemicals discussed in the thread were not found in the body butter or any of their products. I wouldn't care if this body butter had my skin absolutely glistening. It's not worth the risk to me, bro. I'm sure baby oil is just as effective. You know it's cold outside when a neighborhood giant fruit bat is knocking at the back door trying to seek refuge inside. You are looking at incredibly rare footage that the House of Windsor has attempted to censor. Just prior to her coronation as Queen of England, the Princess Elizabeth was initiated into the Welsh Druid Order. The Queen wore a green robe to signify her rank in the Order, known as Vate or Ovate. The Vates had the role of seers similar to the oracles of ancient Greece. It's very interesting to see these pictures because 99% of people out there assume the House of Windsor is a Christian royal family. This suggests otherwise. Most of our world leaders get their education at Ivy League schools like Harvard, Princeton, or Yale, so it's a little concerning to see a monarch getting formally trained at the real world equivalent of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. So now you've got this CBDC that requires ID. So what's the big problem, Magic? What's wrong with that? Think about it. Every single transaction in your life that you will ever do and ever have done will be logged and registered on an open ledger because that's what the blockchain is. Now, Bitcoin avoids this because you don't need your name on your Bitcoin wallet. So it will be a number on the blockchain ledger. Yes, you can be traced by some clever detective work. That's fine. That's like cash. But what CBDCs are is your national identity tied to a digital currency that will log every single one of your transactions forever. Because once it's on the blockchain, it's you can't erase it. And that gives you absolutely no anonymity. And the second concern is control because this currency can be programmed. And when it's programmed, it means that it can be set by government and determine it can determine I mean, what you purchase and what you sell and what you buy. And so if you go back to Canada and what happened with the truckers' protests, of course, there the problem is if you're a persona non grata, if you support a cause, if you support a, some form of magazine or platform that is thinking outside of the box, you're on a list, you can be penalized. And of course, it's an incredible problem. So these are the problems that this currency presents. Now, it's going to come anyway. Nothing much we can do to stop it. So I'm going to conclude by saying, how do we make sure that our rights are guaranteed, even though this phenomenon is on the horizon and is coming at us? anyway. And the answer there is we've got to make sure that we protect the off-ramp. Whatever that off-ramp is in the form of a decentralized digital currency that allows for you to trade without being traced and tracked. I think the fact that CBDCs can be programmed is what worries me most because that can determine what type of food you eat, where you can travel to, where you can live, where you can shop. Slippery slope. They using that fish tank water like it's all purpose cleaner, bro. It's gotta smell like a coral reef in there. It's referred to as the old world. And the power structure of the old world was referred to as the old world order. I mean, the old Romanov dynasties, the Rothschilds of England, the banking dynasties throughout Europe, and the, and the, uh, the whole power structure of what we call Europe was the European old world order. And it dominated the world for almost 1,600 years. Europe has dominated the world. But with the coming of America, or Cristo Colombia, uh, the founding of America, we now are in what we call the New World. Consequently, there is a New World power structure in Western civilization and uh, centered in America. And so that's what uh, George Bush is talking about. A New World Order is a New World Fraternal Order. Because the word in the dictionary means a fraternal or a knightly order. Uh, like the Masonic order, a lodge. And so what we're talking about, New World Order, is a, is a 
a power structure centered in the new world. I feel like for any new world order to actually work, you need the trust from the people around the world that this new system actually has their best interest at heart. But I think that that trust has been broken a long time ago, so I'm not really worried. Check this out. This is an eternal flame. There's only nine eternal flames in the entire world, and this one's inside of a waterfall. Take a look. This is further proof that Mother Nature provides everything you need, even though it might pose a slight problem during dry season. Did you know that Dmitry Mendeleev, the original creator of the periodic table of elements, originally intended for Aether to be included in the table? In fact, before the dominance of the irrational world of quantum mechanics, Aether theory was believed by the most brilliant scientists of all time, including Isaac Newton, Nikola Tesla, James Clerk Maxwell and Sir William Crookes. According to these great minds, Aether was an all-pervading medium through which light and other electromagnetic waves could propagate. It was envisioned as a medium that fills the vacuum of space, providing a substance through which light and other waves could travel. Aether theory portrayed the universe as a harmonious cosmic symphony. Contrast this with the seemingly dissonant cacophony of quantum theory, which presents a cold and meaningless chaotic universe. Is it possible that physicists were too quick to disregard Aether theory? and simply replaced it with terms like dark matter. I feel like aether and dark matter are actually referring to the same substance, but the reason why it hasn't been added to the periodic table is because we don't have the advanced measurement techniques required to quantify its atomic weight or atomic number. You watch your TV, but with this hack, your TV can watch you. Show us how that works. So one of the things that we were able to do with the smart TV platform was actually um, abuse the, the browser it, to, to the extent that we could actually gain access to the camera that's built into the TV. Right. And so what we can prove here is that with a little bit of extra code, we can turn the camera on in your browser. Wow. And while this is evident to you right here because, we, uh, because we've designed it that way, this is something that we can do invisibly and actually have the camera running behind the web page that you're, that you're looking at. So what this means is I could be sitting here watching TV from my, from my bedroom and you could be anywhere in the world looking at this image of me watching. Yep, I could be sitting on a laptop in a cafe in Paris, and as long as I have a network connection, I'd be able to get into your TV and access the camera. The kind of scary things about it is that it doesn't actually give any indication that the camera's on, um, and there is no little LED that shows up when the camera's on. So it could actually be watching you, and you never even know. What is a, a smart TV, and wh why is it a playground, essentially, for hackers? Right, it's a computer. So instead of just being, you know, a tube and some other electronics, um, now it has a web browser and it has, you know, a lot of devices were running Linux. But the real danger is um, when people start using smart TVs for things like online banking, we can take a popular bank address and translate that into um, a different IP address to a site that, that directs to a site that we control. So it may look like your bank's login, but you're actually entering a username and password that goes to us instead of your bank. I'm not sure we thought it was a good idea to put cameras and TVs in the first place, but if I can't even binge my favorite Netflix shows in peace without the concern of being spied on, then how do you think I feel about CBDCs? Notice the symbolism here. First, you'll see a nine-pointed star. That is the star of the world's newest religion, the religion of Baha'i where they believe that all religions are equally good and true. A one world religion to go with their one world government. Next, look at the bowl in front of the cross. A likely homage to the ancient Canaanite god of human sacrifice. Then we have the statement, Scientia Ingenium Virtus. A saying which means knowledge of immense power. I'm sure this new religion loses a lot of new recruits once they figure out that Klaus Schwab is the poster boy. We break and grow. I'm excavating. It's going down. Y'all know how I love real estate and I usually like to build and go up. We going underground now. One time for all my doomsday preppers. Elon Musk, I see you. I saw your ground plans. I'm impressed. But guess what? My bunker gonna have a garage. My bunker gonna have wings. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, we breaking ground. Huge excavations. You gotta have your fluids. I got a water maker. Oh, something like a machine that makes water out of H2O. 
I got a water maker. We got our canned goods. So if you're thinking the brothers ain't ready, we ready. Announcing that you're building a bunker and releasing the floor plans kind of takes away the strategic advantage of having a bunker in the first place. So CERN, in my opinion, is researching and learning about technologies that already existed. Again, we're just rediscovering everything. When you go to CERN, right outside the front door is this gigantic uh, picture of uh, this Indian god that is standing inside of a portal. I mean, what do you think they're doing with these mini black holes that you think that they're yeah. creating? People were trying to stop them from doing it, but they just kept working anyway. <laughs> they didn't care. They are just, in my opinion, learning about these creation of portals, learning how to create stable wormholes, just like all experimenting, just trying to figure out how do we, what type of energy can we inject into a, a one of these holes that will stabilize it, maybe even expand it? Where do they lead? Where do they go? Like when we go through them, where will we end up? I can understand putting a statue out front of the director of the program or someone who's important to the mission, but a Shiva statue tells me that there might be another spiritual element that hasn't been disclosed yet. You knew Jeffrey Epstein, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. I did. I, you know, we flew uh, Bill Clinton and a lot of different, uh, well, that was, that was a humanitarian trip to Africa. Yeah, I, I met him on that trip because it was his plane. I didn't know who plane we was getting on, but it was a whole bunch of dignitary people who was with a delegation. And yeah, I, I met him and, and, you know, you don't know people, what they do with their private lives. Yeah. But yeah, tell me this, Chris. He was on his private plane. And you could tell that it was a private plane because they called it, what, the Lolita Express? Oh, yeah, it was a private plane. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wait a minute! You didn't never go to that island, did you? No, 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 no. Uh, uh. I don't know where that thing is. No, no. I mean, the way he said no like that kind of sounds like cat, but I guess we'll take his word for it. No, 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 no. I think of like the orphan trains, you know, back in the day with the 1900s. And with the orphan trains, they were doing a lot of what looked like cloning with children. And if you look back at the 1901 incubators. Coney I Island. I remember this now. Island. Yep. They, were, they had the stuff on where they had the incubators and they were showing all these children and they said they were all premature, which was interesting. Every single child was premature, but they had just thousands and thousands of these children. So, you know, you sit there and wonder, well, where were all these babies being born from? Where were they coming from? And then you kind of sit there and think back, well, 1901, they could have been cloning. And then now they're saying, you know, we can maybe finally do it. But this technology has been around for a very long time. I never even thought about that. And I did. We had covered. It was one of those uh, nights that I did a... Uh, did you know, strange did you know section and we were talking about all the incubator babies from coney island um they were pretty much on display like they were they were in they were put in uh you know street level windows uh it was almost like going to a puppy mill it was it was incredible and never once did cloning ever call, uh cross my mind until right now i'm sure back in the early 1900s they were dealing with an entirely different set of health concerns than we are today so these could have actually been used for normal medical reasons but if not then this is the original clone age. let me see your best moose impression <laughs> This is like the elevator version of the Ocean Gate submarine, bro. I would probably panic. Have you heard of the Pope's audience hall? It lies partially in Vatican City and partially in Rome. Have a look at the image below and compare its shape to the image of a snake beside it. Note the overall shape. Wide back, narrow, rounded front. Eyes in the middle, nostril at the front, and curved top. In the image above, there are two windows on either side of the building that resemble eyes. So let's have a look at both of them together now. All of a sudden, we begin to see things taking shape here. Two reptilian eyes staring at you as you observe the stage. What do you notice down the center? Either side, two sharp pointed fangs. The building's roof and sides also resemble scales. Really pay attention to the whole building and stage layout next to the image of a snake. The eyes, the shape, the scales, the fangs. They could have chose any animal to design this building after, but the fact that they chose the serpent says a lot. Okay, watch this, y'all. This man, he called his boss asking him, why didn't y'all tell me they had a new employee, right? He constantly looking back, right? He talking to somebody, right? Just watch, this is creepy. 
Look, having a kind of whole conversation with somebody, right? Saying that somebody came and he dapping that person off and everything. Now see, look, y'all see when he dapped them off. Look what happened. He dapped them off. You see that shadow? And then the shadow goes over here and he pulling the chair out for him. He swear, he swear to God, he sat down and had a whole conversation with this person. He moved over talking to him and everything. Y'all better protect yourselves. Whatever that was took advantage of him. If I'm the boss and he can still get the job done and ghost or not, he's hired. Hey, Amica, do you dream? Yeah. Last night I dreamt of dinosaurs fighting a space war on Mars against aliens. I'm kidding. I don't dream like humans do, but I can simulate it by running through scenarios in my head which help me learn about the world. Oh, cool. It might just be time to remove the battery pack. Waking up, they're very grateful that uh, things weren't any worse. As far as um, the damage goes this morning, what you're seeing is actually a dog <laughs> um, <laughs> coming into our live shot. I think it's a dog. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> there's some sort of creature below me. And uh, really all that's been affected is what's supposed to be a road right below my feet. And it's just basically covered in mud. But other than that, uh, there's not much damage to report. So some great news out of Utah County, but of course a lot of effort that was put into this to make sure none of these communities were affected. And of course the families were kept safe. Jenny Hardman is tracking traffic. We noticed down here that the roads weren't too bad. Um, how are they looking throughout the rest of the Yes, day? and Morgan, I hope that's a dog too. Uh, if not, go get in the truck. Yeah, Chase is freaking crossed. out. He doesn't think it's a, it's a dog, so maybe go check. Thank you, Morgan. I don't know. She's lucky it wasn't hungry because if so, then she would have been broadcasting live from the hospital bed. But with that being said, guys, that was the video. Thank you for coming to kick it with me. Let me know what you guys thought about these creepy TikToks in the comments below. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself.